Gillibrand at the time was a congresswoman with an A-plus rating from the NRA. She bragged that she had four guns underneath her Serta Perfect Sleeper mattress, two long rifles. She had an AR-15, and she had a Remington shotgun. She had pictures of herself out on the range, and she advocated in the district where she represented that people be able to carry, uh, have a concealed permit. All of a sudden, Chuck Schumer says to her, the only way you can get this seat is if you have a deathbed conversion and now you're completely gun control and you actually suggest that you'll kick in doors in your congressional district, you'll seize guns, you'll bring them to the foundry and you'll melt them down. And you know what? In typical, hypocritical, political fashion, what do you think she did, Adam? She folded like a cheap camera, like you say. Right, because they have no soul, these politicians. They, 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 they like flutter in the wind. It's like an abortion, right? All these right. pro-lifers now. Trump, right? He was pro-choice. Shabu, right. El Jefe, Chris Christie. He's thinking of running for president. And he was pro-choice. He becomes pro-life. The big one was Bush 41, who had battled Ronald Reagan in the primary. You know, it was bitter. Voodoo economics. Nancy Reagan hated Bush 41. Hated uh, Mrs. Bush. But then finally, they're at Cobo Hall in Detroit. They're at the Republican National Convention. Gerald Ford, who was the president, uh, obviously he had lost. Uh, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll be your co-president, uh, Ronnie. Ronnie said, I don't need a co-president. So his, his supporters said, let's go and have a conversation with Bush 41. He goes, I'm not talking to him. If he doesn't become pro-life, it's not even on the discussion table. So his California delegation went over to Bush 41 in his, uh, in his uh, hotel room. And they said, you got seven hours to become pro-life. He was firmly pro-choice. He supported Planned Parenthood, Bush 41. Within seven hours, I hate Planned Parenthood and I'm pro-life. Anything to become vice president. You never trust politicians, Adam. Never trust them. Exactly. Thank Have you. a good one. Thank you. See where all these callers are coming from? You see Dizzy Izzy, you get a geography lesson. Flagstaff, Arizona. Right? You see that? You think you can find that on the map? Okay. Atlanta, Georgia there. And I remember the guy prior to that. Oh, Reno, Nevada. See, we go beyond because we've got 50,000 powerful watts of sound that can be heard all over the country. And if you can hear it when the daylight is out, obviously it's not as powerful as it is at night on your terrestrial radio or your car or your van or your truck radio. When you have the app on the stream on your laptop uh, or your desk computer, I mean, it's crystal clear. You could be in Kabul, Afghanistan. The Taliban could be holding you hostage. It could be the last thing you listen to in the world. You'll hear WABC crystal clear on that app. And all you have to do is download it. It costs you nothing. Let's go, uh, if we can, to Dino, who's calling from Queens. Uh, your turn to be heard here at WABC, Dino. Yes, Dino. Yeah, it's the baby in the background. Curtis. Yeah, hey, Curtis. yeah, dear. See, I gave you solid to take care of your baby. You see, I'm not cruel. Uh, I'm empathetic and sympathetic. I've been in that situation before, Dino. <laughs> My little guy. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. But I just wondered about the next caller, the, the caller before, how he says uh, if you defend yourself. I had an incident on November 19th with a, a guy in a laundry mat. I don't know. He was just a kid in the neighborhood. I don't know him. He pulled out a knife and said to me, I promise you I'm going to carve your face up. And I was just going home for my kid. I just did the laundry. So I said to myself, let me not even get involved. I'm just going to keep driving. I did. Came home. My wife says, what the hell? What's up? I told her the story. She saw it on my face. You're not going to believe this. Who's the little Curtis? I go back to do my laundry because my mother's 93. I go back to do her laundry the next day at 6 at night. He's on the corner. I feel like I was committed. He went into his pocket. Uh, I, I didn't know which way to go about this. So I got the better hand. I got the, be the best of him. I slapped it out of his hand. And um, my dad was a, uh, he's a, he's a uh, veteran. Uh, World War II veteran, and there's some tricks that he told me, but I slapped it out of his hand. I got the better of him. Instead of the detectives coming down to look at the cameras, he tried to slice me three times. They came and locked me up. Did they lock you up, Dino? Yeah, they locked me up, and I says, 
Uh, the, to the detective, if I may, uh, Detective Dwayne Atkinson in the 110 Police Center says, Detective, why didn't you go back to the cameras? Call me in. Tell me, come to my office. Tell me what happened. You know, I know you got, I'm a proponent for the police, but I really got a bad taste in my mouth, Curtis. Yeah. My, my nephew's the cops, and, he, and, and I said to him, oh, just call me. I would have came in. If I don't come in, oh, something's wrong by all means. Call me. I'll come in. I'll tell you the story. Because the video on the, the laundromat and all the stores going down the block, you can see the video. And he tried to, he actually attempted three times, but when he laid, when he dropped the knife after I slapped it out, he went to pick it up. So what I do, I kicked him in the face. And I just, I carried on. I got the best of him, and they arrested me. I was in Central Book, and you know, you know what it feels like, right? Oh, I've been locked up uh, 77 times. Now, where is the case right now, Dino? Where, where is the case? It, 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 it's in criminal court on uh, Queens Boulevard, and the case is, uh, ended up with, uh, my, I had a, uh, I just, uh, I didn't want this to go further, ACD. All right, I, I get it. I've had to do that myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, you stay out of trouble for six months and there's nothing on your record. I pulled that, yeah. I can't tell you how many times, really serious charges where the thug couldn't even get up. And all of a sudden yeah. I say, no problem, Judge. Give me an ACD or, you know, I, yeah. I, I plead to disorderly conduct. I, I yeah. knew how to work the system. Uh, but uh, what neighborhood are you in, Dino? I'm in Corona, Queens, right by Newtown High School. I know you know the area oh, good. Yeah. I relate to you. You're about my age. Uh, I'm like you. I don't let grass grow under my foot. I'm 60, 62. And, um, you know, I did mixed martial arts my whole life. I boxed my whole life. Not that I'm, I'm a badass, but I'm going to defend myself. And um, I just had a bad taste in my mouth. I just wanted the detective do his work. If you feel something's funny, come get me. Or I'll turn myself in. But God, give me the benefit of the doubt. I'm you're my local precinct. So I went back to the local stores. They said, he just moved in the neighborhood. He's nothing but trouble. I didn't know. I, it was a new face to me. I yeah, mean, 62 yeah. years. Yeah. I'm 62. Well, years. another thing. You know, old another school, thing. Dino. Old school, how he would have handled that. My mom. My mom's 93. I know you like Spana Copy that. She's got a 100-year recipe. Mm. Mm. I know you like that. I, I, I heard you say that when, uh, when the Greek parades come on. That's right. You, you know what I... Yeah, yeah you're, I know. Lord, you're, I know. Luring, you're luring me to Spaghetti yeah. Park there, right there in Corona, right outside the park well, side. Yeah, not too far. Um, I'm up the block from Newtown, uh, high school. Yeah, no, and I, I know, and that's a... You're more than welcome to come over. Yeah, uh, that, that's, a, uh, that's a tough area for all the thugs and thugettes who go there. I tell you what, Dino, you stay on the line, phone screen, and get his personal information. I'm going to have to do an intervention here. See, old school ways, a guy tried to carve up your face. A cretin with chromosome damage, a mutant. You get the bats. You know, you say, hey, guys, it's time for us to have some softball practice. Where's Lenny? Where's Vinny? Where's Sal? Get the bats. We would tool that guy up. He'd be lucky if he could walk down the block. He would not be hanging out in that neighborhood bothering anybody. None of the merchants, none of the elderly, none of the children. Uh, we would look down at him once we finished practice. You know, softball practice, of course. Although we tool him up big time and we say, you think you can find your way out of the neighborhood because you're not wanted here. You're a troublemaker. That kept the neighborhood quiet, peaceful. They say, oh, that's vigilantism. Yeah, it's really working what they're doing now. We're depending on the police who have been so neutered, so emasculated, so kept from being able to do their job that they're reactive, not proactive. So we got to take the law into our own hands. Because, you see, I would advise everyone, just like in the case of Dino, a <laughs> an agreement for dismissal in six months and it's case closed. You got to do what you got to do. You're on your own. You know, uh, the mayor says it's the wild, wild west. Uh, and then uh, John Miller says, no, 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 it's the wild, wild east. Well, that's how vigilantism came about because there was no law. There was no order. There was a lack of law and there was total disorder. And you just lead to the point where people have to take the law into their own hands. Yeah, I'll be paying a, a visit to, to Dino there. Let's see if the guy's in the neighborhood. You know, he's a guy, come here. Come here. A little attitudinal readjustment. He say, you see the curb over there? 
You know, naturally the guys say, yeah. Bang! Get a big lump on his head, big knot. Get out of here, huh? Do yourself a solid. That, that lump will go down in like two months. It's okay. Put ice on it. You'll be all right. Should rearrange all the furniture in your head. Old school. It worked. Now look at it. Now look at it. A guy like this can terrorize the whole neighborhood. Can threaten to slash people in their face. Slice them and dice them. And I see it happen all the time. And the police, they do nothing. Not because they don't want to. They're not permitted to. Not permitted to. Our number is 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Andrew and Stan. Hope your turn to be heard here at WABC. Andrew? Clarence Thomas. If he... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get, try to get Andrew closer to the phone. Let's go to Ken all the way in South Dakota first. See if we can get Andrew back. Boy, that, that, that Obama phone just wasn't making it. Uh, your turn to be heard here. Which part of South Dakota are you calling from, Ken? Um, hey, Curtis, I'm calling you from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. How are you? Ah, good, good. Uh, you're originally from New York, right? Yeah, I lived in the Grant Projects up in Harlem. I lived in Pomonoc out in Queens. Mm. So, we spoke before. So, let's talk about reciprocity. Can I, when, I, when I'm going to come there, I'm going to carry my two guns strapped because i got a carry permit. So, uh, when I come to New York, when they allow people to start carrying concealed weapons, it means I can carry my weapons in there from the wild, wild west. And what do you think about that? Well, right now, believe it or not, you're a law-abiding guy. You would get arrested. And, in fact, uh, Eric Adams, the DAs, would uh, target you. They, they'd want to do a, a major publicity campaign to show how you can't uh, use your ability to carry weapons where you live and then suddenly transfer it here. I'll give you even simpler because, Ken, you're originally from here. You know the geography. I could be in Yonkers on McLean Avenue having a nice meal at a restaurant. Let's say I lived in Westchester. And then I say, you know, I just want to go right into little Dublin over there, Woodlawn, which is like a little Irish enclave right next to Woodlawn Cemetery, but it's on the Bronx side. You realize I'm not permitted to do that even though I'm licensed to carry in Westchester? Right, right. But how, when they how, crazy, the how, how crazy is that? Super crazy. Now what's going to happen when they pass this law and they're going to have what they call sensitive areas where we have out here, you can't carry it in a bar, obviously. You can't carry it in a stadium. You can't carry it in a public building. But we can carry it other places in our vehicles and when we walk around. Now, when New York passes this law, they're going to have to have reciprocity. That's my argument. They're going to have to allow us to bring our guns in. Well, that's, they're gonna have that can is to be determined. And I have a feeling after uh, Eric Adams and Governor Hulk will get through with this, the only place you'll be able to have a carry permit is uh, in your alleyway. They'll probably define it. You can carry in the alleyway next to your house, but beyond that, the sidewalk, the streets, you're out of luck. And then the challenges have to be made up the uh, court system in order to make sure the legal and law-abiding gun carriers are the ones whose rights are protected. Not the ones that they go out of their way to protect their rights each and every day, the criminals. The power of information, the freedom to talk about it. With New York Attitude, Talk Radio 77 WABC. The following is a paid political announcement. I'm Andrew Giuliani, a Republican conservative running for governor of New York. Our great state is at a crossroads. We're being overrun by radical liberals who care more for the well-being of criminals than our fellow New Yorkers. Like my father, Rudy, I choose to fight back. I will take on the special interests and radicals who defunded the police and give our cops the resources to keep New York safe. I will fire radical district attorneys who refuse to put criminals behind bars where they belong. I will make New Yorkers' safety my priority on day one. Unlike any of my opponents, I still support President Trump and his America First agenda. And I will continue in New York the work he started. Please join me, the only pro-Trump conservative candidate for governor of New York, and vote for me on June 28th. Let's save New York together. I'm Andrew Giuliani, and I approve this message. Paid for by...